Welcome in Wednesday edition. Blue Sky Live here with you. Chase Parm, Neil McCready, Clark Ford Studio this morning. A rainy, rainy, rainy morning in Oxford. It's been raining for give or take 30 hours straight at this point. I don't know what our precipitation total was yesterday. I saw Tupelo was up around three and a half inches yesterday. Their uh, record for uh, that day. I think that was around the airport. And more coming today and tomorrow. We just got done with the show yesterday. When they announced the uh, the postponement of Ole Miss and Murray State last night at uh, Swayze Field, they have not given a date for that makeup, and I I have not asked anyone. I've spent zero seconds on it. My guess is it is somewhat dependent on those two teams' situations moving forward as to the uh, urgency or likelihood of that game being played. Frankly, uh, not a bad game for their team right now. Is Murray State's RPI around fifty nine? going into the uh, the weekend. And the Rebels still with a pretty high RPI. I mean, I get the record is the record, and that's what matters. But Ole Miss is top 30 RPI right now, and around 28 going into uh, the Mississippi State series here this weekend. So we will uh, we'll talk Lane Kiffin's conversation with the media yesterday. Joey Chestnut going to be in town Saturday. Yep. We'll yep. hit that a little bit. And more coming up on today's show. A show brought to you every day by all Blue Sky locations throughout Mississippi. That includes here with the uh, the Oxford Exxon. That is uh, the lunch specials that are five sixty nine, couple sides bread, any size fountain drink throughout the state. Everything from spaghetti to red beans and rice to meatloaf to whatever you like every single week. Again, great desserts, side items, and more clean convenience stores, fountain drinks for cheap, and all the other goodies there with Blue Sky locations throughout Mississippi. And again, coming to you from the Clark Ford Studio. We are Clark Ford's in Amory, Mississippi, 662-257-1900 is the number. Call it. Ask for Corey Clark. Tell Corey what Ford product you're looking for. He'll send you a quote within 15 minutes in business hours. Right to the bottom line. No hassle, no haggle. You get your quote. The rest is up to you. Shop the quote around. Or you can do what I've done, what I recommend that you do, and that's hop into a Clark Ford today, 662-257-1900. 100 guests join on the Campbell Clinic hotline. The Campbell Clinic is in Oxford now, 2608 South Lamar Boulevard, Suite 102, just across the street from the cottages at Hooper Hollow. The Campbell Clinic provides full-service orthopedic care, everything from sports medicine to foot and ankle surgery to spine and total joint care, pediatric orthopedics, physical therapy, and more. To book an appointment, go to Campbell clinicoxford.com or call 901-759-3111. Walk-ins always welcome at the Campbell Clinic, Monday through Friday, 7.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. I'm going to get over into the Lane Kevin stuff in a minute, but it, it, what has been the reaction? I saw them, a couple of posts this morning, people being a little bit negative toward it. Am, am I crazy that I really like uh, Wimbin Yama's like, alien-looking logo thing for his, his, his brand coming out? Did you see this? I haven't seen it. Yeah, yeah, it's like it, it's good. Like I see people kind of like whatever about it, but a lot of those basketball shoe logos are not very good. Yeah, that one's, that one's pretty good. Yeah, if you haven't seen it, that's no, that, I have to that's, check that's, that out. Yeah, yeah, they play the um, they play Thunder tonight. Do they? Yeah, Chet versus Wimbenyama. Wimbenyama. I'm so struggling. Yeah, another over. another media narrative that is maddening. They're not the same player, but the media wants them to be exactly apples versus apples. That'll pass in a year. Oh, I don't know. I have no faith in our field. You you have a lot more faith in our field than I do. I think our field is a complete collection of boom, buffoons. But of the people that you actually want to focus on, they're not doing it. It's that it gets loud yeah, yeah, it's, in, it's, the, in the middle. It's a, the, a loud, just click click monsters. They're totally different players. And they're playing on completely different teams. I mean, one team has won 55 games and is fighting for the one seed in the West. The other team is in very much beginning stages of a complete rebuild around him. I mean, there's only only one player. Are they in the playing at all or anything? Oh, no, no, no. Oh, no. Okay. no, no, no. I mean, Sohan is the one guy that they'll probably, you can almost assuredly will, will be part of the Wimbenyama rebuild in San Antonio as opposed to what's happening. And this, I'm not saying one's right or wrong. I mean, one's just further along. The, the Thunder have an all-NBA player and probably a second one that, is in the mix in Jalen Williams. I mean, Chet's playing on a completely different team for completely different stakes on a completely different timetable than women. Yama. It's just, but no, we must compare them right against each other. Like a tape measure for a boxing match drives me counter nuts. I 
I know you don't care because it's just in the rebuild and this isn't the season that does it, but where would you place the over-under on Thunder playoff exit? Oh, first round. First round? Yeah. Okay. I'd be surprised if they get out of the first round. Really? Yeah. They just Playoffs are a completely different game, and people are going to lock in on them. They're going to take away things. It's going to be more physical. Shea's going to have a hard time getting to the free throw line as much as he does during the regular season. Um. Now, look, if the playoffs began today, they'd, they'd draw the Pelicans. And they did a good matchup. And if Brandon Ingram's not out there, I, 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 like, yeah. the, I like the Thunder. Um, but, you know, but a young team losing in the first round, it won't be. It, the media will make it out to be, oh, God, oh, look, it doesn't work. I will look at it and go, no, this is the NBA. First-year teams never win. And Shea's played some in, some playoffs. Lou Dort played some playoffs in the bubble. That's about it. Yeah. Giddy's never played a playoff game. Chet's never played a playoff game. Neither of the Jalen Williamses have ever played a playoff game. Um, Kenrich Williams hasn't played a playoff game. I don't think Andre Wiggins has played a playoff game. They're 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 guys just they'll, this will be a, a new thing to them. Yeah, if you're Jackson South, be uh, pretty careful today. There's tornadoes, potentially, stuff going on coast up, um, it looks like, at this point. So just uh, be aware of that. I mean, obviously, you probably don't need me telling you if you're in one of those areas, but just a uh, little bit of heads up on that if you were not aware. Did you see aware. the hail in the Jackson area last night? No, I did not. Unbelievable. Really? Yeah. Large? Just in voluminous. Really? Yeah. Yeah, no, I did not. We had that. one of our trees snapped in the front yard. Did it really? Last night. Yeah, we woke up and saw it. Wind? I suppose. Yeah. I slept right through all that. Yeah, I didn't wake up at all last night. So it didn't it didn't catch it there. Um, I mean, obviously we're gonna talk about the hot dog eating and whatnot today, but Lane Kiffin speaking, uh, what all glimpses and this again this is on rebelgrove.com. You read about it yesterday. Um, what all glimpses to Saturday did we get during his his media gathering oh, yesterday? He told us exactly what's coming. I mean, I think it's gonna be funny. I think 90-something percent of people agree with it. I have giggled at the small percentage of people that are a little upset, including one who was real upset who now is all in. Um, you're going to have a seven-on-seven seven flag football. Feels like a tournament, not like one team versus another. Oh, really? I think there's going to be multiple Do teams. Do we get a bracket? That would be awesome. Do man. we get a bracket? I don't know. They only have two hours. Got to be quick. Um, obstacle course. Um, something involving the students, a slam dunk competition. Um, I would guess on lower goals. I mean, if you want to make it fun, you lower it to eight feet. Well, yeah, duh. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and then a hot dog eating competition that may we don't know who all's involved in that. Joey Chestnut's going to be here, but I mean, we don't know if he's eating. No one's, and he's not in game shape to like go take on the world. He's not going to go knock out eighty hot dogs. No. I mean, I will get to his other records in a minute as we spend that on today's show. But, I mean, his hot dog record is 76 in 10 minutes. That happened in 2021. Um, we're not going to see that type of, of, of element. I mean, how many, how many students would it take to beat Joey Chestnut in a four-minute hot dog competition? I mean, if he's trying, he could eat 30 in four minutes. Yeah. Could you find enough can, can, enough people to eat? Seven. One and a half per minute? Yeah, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe that's the way you do it. I, I beats me. Maybe he's just going to come out and judge it and wave. And They have a TV window from three to five. I'm guessing they're done at five. Oh, I'm sure there's prep work, G, that goes into Joey Chestnut getting game ready for his hot dog eating competition. No, he, he's yeah. I actually said as much. He has to practice eating that food. Yeah. I've read some stuff about him. Uh, the... Yeah, I've, I've deep dove into that occasionally. He has to prepare for a competition by eating that food. Then he does it, and then he has to find a way to lose the weight and mm -hmm. get back to normal without completely over. They do a ton of exercise to move food through. Yes, without they, completely disrupting his digestive system. Right. Then it comes down to form. You're dunking the buns in the water and the whole deal, and there's a rhythm to it. I don't know what the 
cooking method on the hot dogs is grind. I, I have not asked a lot of these questions. Looking back, I wish I had asked some of these questions of Kiffin yesterday because it would have been funny. I asked. I did ask Lane when the last time he had a hot dog was. He said it's been a minute. He said it's been since before the whole red meat thing. Uh huh. Then he said he might have a relapse. We all had a good kick out of that. Yeah, I mean, there's. I would assume the three most famous eaters quote in the world are Kobayashi Chestnut, who's as Lane said, the goat of goats, and Matt Stoney probably would be the three that I'd probably go with there. Uh, I don't know how old. It was Chestnut in my story is. yesterday. I wrote it. I think he's forty. He is forty years old. Yeah, he's from Westfield, Indiana, and he weighs two hundred and thirty pounds. Yeah, grew up in California, but lives in Indiana. Okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, I'm just grilled or boiled matter. You think it does to me, but you're not, your palate is the last thing on your mind here. Yeah. I, I mean, I would think in a competition, I don't know that it matters, but to me, there's a tremendous difference in taste in a grilled hot dog and a boiled hot dog. Yeah. I don't think I'm kind of with JM hot dog doesn't count as red meat, but I'm quoting the coach. I know I'm just saying. I mean, all there are all beef hot dogs, but I'm still... I think that was his way of saying he's not eating any processed meat. Yeah. I think Lane's a pretty clean eater at this point. I wonder where he gets fish in town, like, consistently. You can get a couple places if we'll get it up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah on the coast. LB's has it. Butcher LB's shops carry it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, can, you can make that work. I bet Lane can afford one of those subscription services that will just ship it to you wherever you would like, whenever just, you would like it. God, there's no wine in this. No, Ooh. no, no. You're good. Because, man, hey, you allow a wine we club are, thing I, to happen, and the next step is total anarchy. I've told you. I, I've, I've done a lot of almost like Smokey and the Bandit stuff to get liquor here before. I mean, it, it, it takes a lot of effort to get your your bottles when you when you need them inside the state. How do you deal with the guilt? And the when you're the one shipping, wrapping it up in a way that won't break or anything like, but also the the, the, the post the office isn't going to catch you. It's a bit of a when you're committing this crime, what's going through your mind? Is it mail fraud? Wouldn't be fraud. What would I it mean, be? Interstate mail fraud. I mean, when you're doing this, what, interstate contraband. When you're doing that's it, the word. What goes contraband? What goes through your mind? Do you think about your wife and child? Do you think about what's going to happen? Do you do you think about? <laughs> The lawlessness of yeah, the of, of the, the act here when we just do this. the pure. I mean, because what's I mean, once you start a life of crime, anarchy is what it is. I mean, it's just, anarchy. You never know what's next. It's the tipping point. It's the gateway drug. It's the marijuana of fraud and and contraband. I'm going to be honest with you, knowing that you have violated the laws of the state of Mississippi as it pertains to shipping alcohol, letting you in my house each and every morning is terrifying. Your dog's not scared of me though. He, he, not yet. He's not. But now he'll listen to this podcast. He and, doesn't growl like he has before. It's, I it's, mean, it's, Rizzo's going to go, he did what? He shipped wine? I, I mean, I don't know. I man. know we've told it a thousand times, but that dog growling at that cat when he came in is maybe one of the five funniest <laughs> things that's ever happened in my life. When a, back, when a black lab backs up and goes, grrr. Yeah. You go, what the hell yeah. was that? Yeah. Holy crap. And that that lab. <laughs> that lab. <laughs> I mean. That dog didn't even move a muscle when I walked in. Nah, he's all good. He, his eyes didn't even look nah. up at you. Uh -uh. Nah, whatever. He's like, whatever. Yeah, it's fine. But he walked in and he's like, whoa. <laughs> whoa. Yeah, yeah. There's a vibe here. I don't like it. He did two steps back and went, Grr. Whoa. Yeah, he's he's lived six and a half years, and that is the only time in his entire life that he has kind of growled. JM says, uh, scored a bottle of Dram last weekend for 150 to Bourbon Lottery. You know, I, congratulations, but that, that shows you where the prices have gone. It actually kind of almost upsets me when you say that because could have gotten that at even 95 a bottle a few years ago as often as you would like, and now it's 150 in a lottery where you're happy about it, like the the bourbon hunting has caused increase in spikes mm -hmm. in ways that just make it so stupid. Yes. Especially for that mid-level stuff that it's good, really, yeah, really good sure. and has a name. Sure. I kind of go, I'm, no, 
No. You priced me out of it. I mean, it's something I would have had bottles of all the time, and now no, I'm not. I'm not paying that for it. It's so. almost made me shift my interest. Yeah, a little bit. And now it's happening a little bit with tequilas and mezcals, mezcals and, and rums next. Mm-hmm. Rum is next. Yep. Yep. And then we'll see where it, where it goes from there. But yeah, just yeah, that's a whole different deal. But so all right. We got all those things. Lane is asking students to show some will. You're not going to sell out student section for a spring game. It just is what it is. Well, they're clearly involving the fraternities and sororities. To try to get the... It's smart. Because you can probably... smart. You can probably get the freshmen in the sororities and fraternities to show. I mean, it's free. Whatever. I'm I'm not going to be the guy that goes, this failed. No, it's already succeeded. I don't care what happens on Saturday. It has it has succeeded. I mean, I well, try not to go all fanboy here. Even nationally, he's getting more. He's getting more pub than him. Goes, hey, we're going to play a spring game on Saturday. I give him. I, I try not to go fanboy because it's it's my job to be objective. Finally, a coach said it out loud. He did. He gave the quote yesterday. He said it out loud. Nothing good comes out of those games. Nothing productive. There's nothing to analyze. You're not doing anything. Frankly, it's just a waste of... I mean, I don't remember his exact words. I think if you think outside of the box, traditional way of doing things, which is well known, we do. And I think over time, the spring game really isn't of much value. Very rarely do they run more than a few types of plays and schemes. So I don't know the traditional spring game really gets you very much from an evaluation standpoint. It was just kind of done because it used to be done that way. Mm -hmm. We'll see what this is like. There you go. Thank you. They would always say that privately, but no coach wanted to say that out loud. And it always kind of drove me a little crazy. Like, I can remember covering Auburn and Tommy Tuberville would come over and go, hey, if you guys have any bets on the MVP, go with this obscure wide receiver because he's about to catch the ball 20 times. And then he did. And you're like, that dude won't play at all in the fall. But why, why are we here? Hiram White won at least one spring game MVP, maybe two during his career. I do recall that. So, it, And so unless you, everyone's in on the joke, and that was the thing, most of the fans weren't in on the joke. Because mm-hmm. they're out, of, you know, the, and then some of the media, including some of the, me, quote, media, end quote, who will now go, this is the greatest idea in the world. They were, were the ones, by it. they were the ones that were going to take a spring game and turn it into 10 different podcasts or content items about, all the all the clues that we got from you the spring have game. again, unless you did the draft, and even so, when you do a traditional spring game, you were literally putting on television some semblance of players running out first versus running out second before the portal opens in a couple of days. Literally, period. Literally forty eight hours. Yes. No. 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 There's no. There's no, no never. reason. There's no reason to do it. Why do that to yourself? And then why put it on the field? Why put anything on film? Yeah, it's being. It's going to be streamed. It's on TV. So instead, put a little basketball thing out there and dunk a little bit and be done in two hours. Run an obstacle course. Let the KDs battle the Tridelts and have fun. Let it be. Is there a trophy? I don't know. I'm sure they're looking at Hart and them and going, hey, tell me when you're off because when you're off, we're out of here. Yeah. Give me a signal. Yeah. We good? Yeah. Yeah. ESPN happy? Y'all got your two hours? Okay. Yeah. Peace out. Blow the whistle. Peace. Is it bad that I dread the post thing press conference when people say, what'd you get out of the spring after today? Hey, I know they weren't pads, coach, but, you know, wide receivers (laughs) running around, juice catching some balls. Can you kind of take me through what you saw from them out there today? (laughs) You know I'm right. Oh. It's coming. Believe me, I've been at every one of the press conferences. It's coming. (sighs) Hey, Coach. What would you think of your offensive line this spring? There you go. That's a good one. I mean, Lane basically said it. Camp's going to be different because in camp when you show up, you're getting ready for a game, getting ready for a season, a season that could be 16 games long. You have to have a plan. He said it. NFL doesn't. NFL doesn't play spring games and they don't 
NFL doesn't tackle in the spring. I don't think they've tackled at all this this spring. Yeah. In, in fact, I, I don't think they've done any. Even in the scrimmages, it's we'll been bump. it's been. I don't even think it's wrap up. I mean, they're going to play flag football Saturday. It's cool. I'm good. You don't play a game for. Is it two hand touchers that literally flag? I think they're putting fa- flags on. Okay. It's fine. It's what the NFL did. They played- it's weird that I'm almost more interested because I'm curious what they look like in flag football. Because we always think, hey, they they roll flag football. Like, yeah, good luck. Yeah. NFL played at the Pro Bowl thing. They played yeah, yeah, flag football. I mean. yeah. And it was actually fairly entertaining. Because, I mean, you are getting elite athleticism out on the field, moving left, right, and all that stuff. It's kind of like, I mean, it's for years saying, hey, if we care, and I mean this in a primary the way we do about football, soccer. I mean, you don't think Reggie Bush would be good on a soccer field? Yeah, he would run all over everybody. Oh, he'd be I amazing, mean, especially if he had training for years I mean. and years and had, you know, the ball skills. Yeah. But his athleticism. Yeah. Plenty. Sure. So, all right, we'll get into some more Joey Chestnut and uh, and more coming up in, in a second. First, uh, if you eat a bunch of hot dogs, you might need some antacids, some different things. G&M Pharmacy in Oxford will help you out with that. They are on South Lamar in Oxford. That's 662-236-2222. Also in Holly Springs with Tyson Drugs. They deliver locally in the Oxford area and they offer MedSync. If your prescription the same day each month, take care of you in that way. It's also easy to... Transfer your medications. Make one phone call. They take care of the rest. So, again, whether that's in Holly Springs with Tyson Drugs or GNM in Oxford, that's 662-236-2222. Uh, we're also brought to you by our friends at uh, Comer Heating and Air, Southern Air Conditioning and Heating, different names, but same great people, products, and services. If you live in Oxford, Tupelo, Batesville, the surrounding area, call, call, call Comer, 662-801-1777. If you live in Hernando, Memphis, or uh, the surrounding area, call Southern, 662-429-4429. Are you retiring soon? How long should you wait to take Social Security? What accounts should you pull from first? These are just some of the questions that can only be answered with the personalized retirement income plan. Andrew Sego, Sego Wealth Management, specializes in helping folks just like you come up with their retirement game plan. Whether you meet at his office in Collierville or prefer, prefer Zoom from anywhere, Schedule a free discovery meeting and see what they can do for you. It's rebelsretire.com. Coming up uh, this weekend for uh, the Grove Bowl stuff or for the baseball series or both, stop by the College Corner. It is in Oxford, uh, right off of uh, Sisk Avenue in the Oxford Commons. More than 4,000 square feet of the best Rebel gear. Plenty of parking available. Their staff is going to have you in and out. Uh, ready for uh, Vaught Hemingway, ready for Swayze in no time. Uh, also, uh, two locations in the Jackson area, and you can check out their website as well. It's collegecornerstore.com. Call Argent Welts 401k Advisory Services team today, and they'll conduct complimentary, no obligation benchmarking and analysis of your current 401k plan. Mention that you heard about Argent Wealth on the podcast, and you'll get 10% off of your first year's fees. We're also brought to you by John Edwards Regency Travel Incorporated in Memphis. Uh, Get in touch with John if you're trying to make a special trip, one that creates a lifetime of unique memories. Just give him some parameters, give him a budget that's really important, and then let him uh, give you some options that you're probably not going to find on your own. Uh, And no, you don't have to live in or near Memphis to take advantage of his services. 901-494-3387 or send him an email, jedwards at regencytravel.net. So I'll get to uh, get to Chestnut in a uh, in a second. Did you see Florida baseball lost by fifteen last night? I did see that actually. Believe it or not, I saw that one. Florida State nineteen to four over the Gators last night. After Florida gets swept at Missouri over the weekend, Missouri last night losing to SIU Edwardsville. By the way, in a uh, in a midweek tilt there in Columbia. Kevin O'Sullivan's not really the guy with the demeanor either to like calm you down and make sure you know it's a marathon. Um, you want to pick an unravel team potentially. His personality is not fit for reclamation projects in Gainesville. It's a little weird. No, they're officially weird. Because if you look around the league, like the teams that I think we view as contenders right now, mm-hmm. they sort of take care of business for the most part. They do. Midweek kind of stuff, you know? Yeah. Methodical, sort of just AM, get, Arkansas, Tennessee. Yeah, they just kind of get it done, right? You don't even Kentucky think Kentucky lost to Sanford last night. Yeah. Or whatever. But it was in Birmingham, by the way. They traveled. Oh. 
Where do they play this weekend? That's what I was looking. They've got to be over there somewhere. Why else in the world would you do that? Maybe they're in Auburn or in Tuscaloosa. No, Arkansas is in Tuscaloosa, right? They are at Auburn this weekend. Okay, it makes sense. Yeah. And on Thursday. So, yeah, they just it's played a game. Scheduling that made sense. It was. How about that? Yeah. Crazy. But, I mean, Florida's weird. I no longer think of Florida as this title contender. Maybe they will be, but as of this moment, I'm, I'm not. They don't have pitching. I'm not willing to bet on that. They're schizophrenic mentally, and they still have some weird series left. Like, and, I mean, there's no guarantee that they roll up 14 wins. South Carolina got a nice win, a uh, neutral site against North Carolina and Charlotte last night, and then everybody else pretty much took care of business. LSU 16 nothing over McNeese last night at the box. State's game with UAB canceled as well as Ole Miss's game with uh, Murray State. So neither team with the midweek now heading into this weekend in Oxford. Just Would have been very there. difficult to play a baseball game last night. South Al won 5-4 in Tuscaloosa last night, too. Okay. Okay. It's fine. <laughs> Whatever. South Al 18 and 15 overall. Not like it's a good set of Jaguars. But what LSU do yesterday? 16 nothing over McNeese State there yesterday. You go. They took care of business. Back what are you on, talking about? Back, back on track, back on baby. Track, ready to go. Everybody at the box is cool. They're not worried about it. Uh, was Jeff Jum- Drummond's report correct yesterday about Dan Hurley? I did not see his report. Jeff Drummond, uh, Rivals.com, reporting that Kentucky floated an offer to Dan Hurley yesterday for $11 million a year. Okay. I'd heard, that, buy it? I, well, I'd heard that they were willing to go as high as 12 for okay. Hurley. Yeah. He makes about five right now in stores. Kentucky is prepared to, I mean, I'm sorry, Connecticut is prepared to get him to eight or nine. And the consensus is that he will stay. Yeah, sure. But yeah. Because if I could have nine in stores or 11 in Lexington, I've won twice in stores. I'm good for a while. Lexington, they expect me to do that now. Now it'd be cheaper st- in Lexington. Cost of living can get you in, in Hartford a little bit. Sure. I'm staying in stores. <laughs> okay. I'll make it work with a, with nine million. We'll we'll, we'll figure it figure out. Figure it out somehow, some way. We'll cut back somewhere. Honey, please <laughs> tell the kids to take smaller showers. Yeah, yeah. Quicker showers. The hot water bill's a little high. No, you'll you'll be okay. It appears, and this is just kind of coming from Jeff and from. Uh, yeah, I mean, I can, I agree with this. My one problem with this is UConn's a better job. It just is right now. I mean, I, period. So, anyway, but yeah, Jeff Drummond saying that. There seems to be a lot of, lot, a lot, a lot of buzz around Scott Drew to Kentucky the last 12 hours. Yeah. that that That's the name that I believe the most that has been getting the most smoke. We'll put it that way. His decision is an interesting one. He's been at Baylor a long time. It's his job. They'll never fire him. Makes a lot of money. Excuse me. Rebuilt it from literally the ashes. It's his. And there's Kentucky. Now, he's a weird coach. Not a great postseason coach. Kind of got a little Rick Barnes to him. I, I got a title. Got a title. Got a title. Can't take it away. No, he has. Yeah, sure. But it's weird. He's got a strange tenure. They're good. But they – and maybe you can at Baylor. I don't know. But he hadn't taken next. Yeah. You're not going, hey, North Carolina, Connecticut, Baylor. Who else is on the UK list these days? They're still doing the Billy Donovan thing? Well, they want to make him say no. Bulls last night blew a three on nothing break, by the way. Did you see that highlight? Uh, I did not. Yeah. I watched- three on zero and didn't score. Oh, wow. I did watch a good bit of it. They fought each other, basically, for the ball and didn't score. That happens. Um, their tier two, according to Matt Jones, was Beard and Shaka and somebody else. I forget who else was on that. Has Todd Golden's name come up for that job? Totally serious. Is he going to be okay in Gainesville? I don't know. I think he's an elite coach, all jokes aside. Yeah, sure. It's, Kentucky's not hiring Todd Golden. They can't be okay with themselves doing that. <sighs> Cal puts out his uh, three-and-a-half-minute goodbye video <laughs> yesterday. Puts it out first in, like, standard definition, grainy film, and then replaces it about ten minutes later with an HD version. <laughs> um, flip phone to actual camera there. Um, is that what happened? 
I don't know. Yeah. But it was grainy as hell when I turned it on and it was deleted and then we came back a minute later. Did it, it was, again. It was good. Yeah. Um, said it was just time for a new voice in Lexington. He's right. Really enjoyed their time there. It's been great. I'm sure they did. Yeah. No, he, he, he was... It frankly was not overproduced, which I appreciated. Like, he even stumbled through some words and they just let him talk. It wasn't... Yeah. That was good. Yeah. I thought, given the whole situation, it was as fine as anything could have been. Mitch Barnhart better get this damn thing right. But He wants to keep coaching. He, he said, said that. He said it. You yeah. know, referred to Kentucky as the bluest of blue, mm-hmm. which it is. Not wrong. Which is a positive and a negative. And said you can stay someplace too long, which is true. What do you tell your kids all the time when they go to a friend's house? Don't overstay your welcome. Don't overstay your welcome. He probably overstayed his welcome. He has said that. Yeah. Yeah. So it'll be interesting to see what he does at a, at a new place, which I am hearing will happen today. It's supposedly a 6 p.m. press Yeah, conference. already some signage being put up around the campus in the last 12 18 hours, something like that. It's quite the buzz there, well, to say the least. That's fair. Yeah. Sometimes, and I know this is not what we do, sometimes everybody wins. Yeah. And sometimes everybody loses. There's a scenario where it doesn't work either place. And we don't know the answer to that yet. No. Cal may win or he may lose. Who won? Who lost? I don't know. Right now, everyone's undefeated. And no one's won anything. Let's, why don't, There's a big carousel why, with this. Why don't we wait and see? The, the teams involved in this, and we don't know what scale of winner and loser. Arkansas, Kentucky, whoever the hell hires Kentucky's school, or the Kentucky hires their coach's school. Ole Miss, Chris Beard. All those are in a big pile. We'll see who wins next year, and the next year, and the next year. Sure. I don't know. Arkansas may flame out, and they might win the national title in two years. I don't know. I mean, it, me. if the money rumors, and I use the word rumor, capitalized, italicized, bolded, underlined. If the rumor is true, man, it's going to be fascinating to see what they put together with that amount of money. A bunch of freshmen they, who don't play defense. Like that is, boy, that'll be a, still a ton of them because, wow. I don't know what the going rate on a five-star is. Mm-hmm. But, I got a feeling like Flag got a good bit of cash. Yeah, he's different. Duke's really good next year. I mean... That dude, he's he's special. All right, so in honor of Joey Chestnut, again, in Oxford on Saturday, the goat of goats, as Kiffin said, and it's true. It's like a 16-time winner of the hot dog competition. Is that correct? I believe 16. 16? 16 or 17 times. Okay, mm-hmm. and again, his record is 76 Nathan's hot dogs, which aren't small, in 10 minutes. That's correct. Is it 76? It's 76. Okay. Yes, that is correct. So I'm going to run you through some of his records. The international major league eating.com is my reference for this. Ah, yes. International uh, Federation of Competitive Eating or whatever it is they call this thing. And do you want to do disgusting level or impressive level on a one to 10? Both. You want to do both? Sure. All right. I would not enter this competition. He did 141 hard-boiled eggs in eight minutes. No, I wouldn't either. My palate and the texture doesn't work for me with that. Laura loves hard-boiled eggs, and she makes them and does the thing. No. And I have to leave the house. I don't even like the way it smells. Carly Ann had a, had a stretch there where she wanted them in her lunch every day. And, yeah, it was it's, it's, that's tough. I, I don't eat them. I really don't want an egg unless it's scrambled or, like, fried on a sandwich is kind of my, my, my egg. I mean, I love omelets. It's like literally one of my favorite yeah, foods. I love omelets too. Now they have to be cooked right. <laughs> sure. Okay. St. Leo has a really good fried egg sandwich with like pancetta and stuff. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But yeah. That's good. Yeah. It's low calorie too. It's fat free. Don't worry about it. You're all yeah, good. Oh, you're all fine. Pancetta. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> what could go wrong? <laughs> yeah. uh, 12 pounds, eight and a half ounces of deep fried asparagus spears in 10 minutes. I mean, those sound good taste-wise. Yeah, yeah. Now, they would get taste fatigue quickly. Flavor fatigue, I think is what they call it. Fried asparagus. You'd smell your urine for a while. Oh, days. <laughs> days. <laughs> I mean, pungent. Yeah, I, 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 that's impressive. Not disgusting, but impressive. On an impressive scale, that's that's way up there. That's that's commitment. 
45 pulled pork sandwiches in 10 minutes. Wow. Like how big is It's got to be sliders, but either way. Still. Yeah, I don't call it whatever the hell you want to call 10 it. 10 minutes pulled pork sliders. How many do you think you could eat? 12, 15? Yeah, sure. Yeah. I mean, more than one a minute. Yeah. More than two a minute would be pushing it, probably. You'd start to feel it. At the beginning, you could. Yeah. You got to eat as many as for any of these. You got to eat as many as you can in like five minutes. Because you're gonna get about five minutes before your body goes, "Whoa, what the hell are you doing?" Wait, what, what's up? What's up here? Yeah, and then after that, it's gonna go, "Whoa, whoa, whoa stop!" Yeah, and you're gonna throw up for sure. But you got five minutes. Taco Bell, fifty-three soft beef tacos, ten minutes. Wow. When was the last time you had Taco Bell? Oh. A while, because I'll be honest, like I don't drink much, and I don't know the last time I've had Taco Bell sober. So I mean, I don't think I've had Taco Bell in seventeen years. I think the last time I had it was two thousand seven. Really? Yeah. So even two years before you lost the weight. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, I had already started realizing that stuff like that was bad. Really? Yeah. Okay. Again, 76 Nathan's Hot Dogs, 10 minutes, July 4, 2021. Um, long form, I guess, okay, I guess the time is long. Chicken wings, 182 wings in 30 minutes. That is wild. 182 wings. And I wonder wings. whether it's the, the full wing or just the drummy. Or, yeah, or I, the, I'm sure there's probably some clarification somewhere. If you told me to, that I had to try one, that would be my The wings? The competition. I love wings. Yeah, because I was I, I answered that in our question today this morning. I think tacos or chicken nuggets would be what I chose. Yeah. I'd rather do hard shell, even though I think it would hurt your mouth because it's going to start cutting your mouth. The shells will literally cut your mouth over that. You're mouth worried that the soft shell is going to get mushy. Yeah. yeah. It, it, again, it's just a, the and I like thing. hard shell more. So if I'm going to have five minutes where I just roll. Yeah. Let's do street tacos with like corn tortillas or oh, let's yeah. do. Yeah. I got you. Let's do that. I'm I'm in. A, a flour tortilla, I don't think is the answer on this. I agree. I I'm I'm I like the corn ta- corn shells better. You good with this? Yeah, I'm with you completely. What's your favorite street taco? The steak or the carne asada or the I mean the the pork? A really good carnita now. Yeah, yeah. The pork oh, is yeah, it's really good. That might be the answer. Taco shop in 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 Oxford. They like, do good. Yeah, it's yeah, really yeah. good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think for your normal restaurants, um, El Agave is not terrible either. I haven't been there. to the place up on the square. I don't really know what. Una Mas. Yeah. Well, I did when it was out on Lamar, okay. but I haven't since they moved. Right. Yeah. And it's got some good stuff. Yeah, it's yeah. always crowded. Yeah. 103 Crystal Burgers, eight minutes. It's a lot of Crystal Burgers. It's a lot. Can you imagine? I mean, I, eight minutes. Again, I think 15, 20, I'm probably maxing out. 13.7 pounds of pork ribs. Wow. 12 minutes. See, that's impressive. Just gnawing, I mean. Well, I mean, because that's a heavy food. And that starts to sit on your stomach and you feel it. Again, skipping some of these because I don't have an understanding of size. 23 six-inch Philly cheesesteak subs. Wow. 10 minutes. Think about that. 10 minutes. Think about that. So 12 feet, essentially, of sub in 10 minutes. 12 foot longs. Like Subway came in and lined up 12 of those bad boys and you got 10 minutes. And that's, again, that's steak and the peppers and the and the cheese and stuff. That's That sits on you quickly. That one's sticking with me for a second. Uh, traditional three-inch tortilla tacos, eight minutes, 126 of them. So that's like a street-type taco, I assume. 126 yeah. in eight minutes? Yeah, 126. Five point nine pounds of funnel cake. Talk about flavor fatigue. The sweetness of that oh, funnel yeah. cake would That'd would, would get you. Would wear you out. Thirty six ounce fish tacos because six ounces ain't light. That's a big taco. That is a lot thirty of, of them in five minutes. So six a minute of a six ounce taco. So that's pounds in five minutes. I love fish tacos. I'm starting to get hungry for tacos at this point. Really? Yeah. It's. 8.49 in the morning. We can line them up tomorrow on the show for you and let you see how many you can do in 10 minutes. It's a Thursday that we're taping with Jeffrey, so that's out. Hand raise, guys. <laughs> hey. Yeah. Fire her up the stream. We'll see what happens. <laughs> 14 and a half pounds of burrito in 10 minutes. Whoa. Now I'm sick. 
in, that that's the that's the ten on the level of I'm I'm getting sick thinking about it. Say that again. Fourteen and a half pounds of burrito in ten minutes. Like one pound of burrito, and I'm I'm done for the day. Ten minutes. Fourteen and a half pounds in ten minutes. Yes. <laughs> Does he even chew? I, I mean, I'm sure there's video online if you'd like to see it. I don't know the answer to that. Rizzo could do that. Fish, uh, shrimp, seven pounds in eight minutes of shrimp. It's a lot of shrimp. It's a lot of shrimp. That's Hundred, uh, 102 tamales in 12 minutes. Wow. 47 grilled cheeses in 10 minutes. 47 grilled cheeses 47. in 10 minutes. That's correct. Like I love grilled cheese. I couldn't even think about that. Oh, this is a good one because most people will understand the size of this. The Cats Delicatessen in New York. Yeah. You know, they're big pastrami sandwiches. Uh-huh. The seven ounce, so the half, 25 in 10 minutes. Unbelievable. That might be the most impressive, impressive. one yet. Because they stack. Oh, it's, it's, it's huge. It's so big. So we're talking about 12 and a half whole in 10 minutes. That, that, that's really impressive. 15, 16 ounce goal, bowl, uh, sorry, 15, 16 ounce bowls of gumbo, 1.875 gallons in eight minutes. The right. shoveling technique on that is, is really a, impressive. Are you, are you drinking it almost? I mean, you got to chew a little because it's got sausage and okra and stuff in all it. All that stuff. Or whatever's it. in it. Yeah. I don't know. But yeah. St. Elmo Shrimp Cocktail. He holds okay. the record. Here we go. He has the record. He's an Indiana boy. The hotness of this. 18 pounds, 9 ounces in 8 minutes. Your mouth would be on fire. Or would it go numb? Well, I guess. You know, the little Hostess powdered chocolate donuts, little donuts that are yeah. in the package? Yeah, yeah. 257 in 6 minutes. What's the sugar content of that bad boy? Two hundred and fifty-seven not- powdered donuts in six minutes. The little bitty ones. Yeah, I'm with Ginger. Ginger says I don't think y'all could eat nearly as many of these as you think you can. You're you're probably true. I think you're right. Well, it's like when Godfrey did the McDonald's challenge thing on video a couple of years ago when everybody was doing that. It was the it was two double cheeseburgers, two double quarter pounders, two quarter pounders. Two 10 or 20 piece nuggets, two or four fries, and then four drinks. And you had an hour. Yeah. And I mean, I kind of did the same thing. I'm like, oh, I could do that. I mean, like, come on. And it like 35 minutes, like he started turning green. Mm-hmm. Like it if if it's not something that you do, yeah, it it's not good. Like I I don't know if I don't remember even remember if he finished it, but I don't I think he did finish it, but and not got, in a time and period. got sick. Okay, maybe that's the, the the deal. But yeah, something like that. Um, nine and a half pounds of whole turkey in ten minutes. Again, I'm scrolling a little now. Um, four point three. This is this is a good one. Four point three three pound apple pies in eight minutes. So twelve thirteen pounds of apple pie in eight minutes. That's a pretty good one. That is good. 82 two ounce carnitas tacos in eight minutes. Uh, 81 Eggo waffles in eight minutes. And then last one, cherry pie, eight minutes. 17 and a half pounds. No way. Of cherry pie in no eight way. minutes. That's incredible. Yeah, the saltine thing in one minute with no water is almost impossible because it becomes mush and cement in your mouth. You can't swallow it without liquid. That's why people failed so much on that because it's incredibly difficult. I am curious just what his like normal favorite meals are. It's on a be- regular Saturday. What do you go to dinner and get? Yeah, when because most of those guys like I, I follow a couple on the internet. I know I'm weird. Um, they eat incredibly healthy at all other times for the that's, most part. That's like, my guess. It's like he's, he's very ha- regimented. He's having some some fish 
maybe yeah. a, a sweet potato, some yeah. Brussels sprouts. There's like one guy on the internet that greens. he does like eating. He does eating videos with like crazy amounts, like once a week. But he's like an Ironman triathlete the rest of the time and eats completely healthy. So again, that guy's in town this weekend. Joey Chestnut here in uh, in Oxford. If you want to see a crazy video, it's the woman who holds the record, or at least did, for the the 72-ounce steak at like whatever the Texas Steakhouse is with all the sides. And she did the 72-ounce steak and all the sides and I forget the exact time, but like three and a half minutes. She literally just picks it up and starts tearing it and, oh, and swallowing it. I've seen that. It's like three, four minutes. Mm-hmm. I think she's the same one that ate, that ate five gallons of mayonnaise in like 90 seconds or something. <laughs> Let I me mean, find the video of that. You are a criminal. You may find the video. I mean, yeah. That's, she just takes a spoon yeah. and starts just as fast as she can shoveling it. No, don't. I don't want to watch it. I'm just going to delete whatever you send to me. <laughs> so forget it. Five pounds of mayo in three minutes. That's the record. Oh. So disgusting. You don't want to watch it? No, I don't. As soon as we get out, I'm, I'm calling the authorities the minute we got out of here. That's the worst one. Forget the eggs. It's the mayo challenge. I'll eat all the hard-boiled eggs you want if it's not the mayo challenge. So. Oh, God. We did all that. <laughs> Ginger says none of this other stuff grows Neil out, but mayo. <laughs> it's so true. I don't know what the record is for most bananas in eight minutes. See, that wouldn't gross me out the way mayonnaise does. What about mayo on the bananas? That's disgusting. You wouldn't have fared well back in the 50s whenever they ate the pear halves with the mayonnaise mm-hmm. on top, the, the, the hors d'oeuvres. Oh, no. Put a little cheddar cheese on top of that. I'd, I'd be, pear, I've, mayonnaise, cheddar cheese. I've seen it, and I'm good without it. It's all fine. Did your mom do that growing up? Stuff like that. There was, there was stuff like that, like at Thanksgiving and stuff. Yeah, I just yeah. skipped it. Do they call it pear salad? We called a lot salad back then that had yeah. mayo and cheese and all kind of crap to it. Now I'm, I'm sure it was called something along those lines. Because you can just now make fun of us for more like calling you know taco salad salad when it's got <laughs> seven beans and south sour cream, seven thousand fat grams. Yeah, all the. But it's a salad. <laughs> you use chips around it. <laughs> just upside down nachos, man. Uh, uh, somebody asked what the oyster record is in January, 2020, it was 492 oysters in 27 minutes. Wow. What's 492 divided by 12? Stacy says, by the way, it was, it is called pear salad. There you go. There you go. 41 dozen oysters in 27 minutes. I don't even see how it's possible. Well, you're just slurp, 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 slurp. Because think of how many, that, that's almost 20 a minute. It's like 18 a minute. Something like that. Yes, potatoes drenched in mayo is absolutely salad. Potato salad. Pasta salad. Salad. <laughs> it's just not salad. It's a casserole. <laughs> We're liberal with our salad. Very. Whatever. So, All right, we'll get back to sports in a, uh, in a second. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. Prom shrimp. Promshrimp.com. They just come in a dozen. Just a dozen. It's good. It's great for lunch. Great for dinner. Great for protein snacks. They make it easy on you. They ship directly to your door. A lot of different flavors. Everything from their uh they got their 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 spicy Louisiana boil. They got the New Orleans style barbecue. It's their best seller. The signature is one of my favorites. They got full meals in a bag like the uh, French Quarter Alfredo, the garlic herb butter, lemon cracked pepper, and more. All those soy ginger is the newest option. Use code RG, 25% off when you buy five pouches or more. Stock up on your favorites. Try a little of everything. Again, that is primeshrimp.com. That is code RG for 25% off. Oxford's newest Greek restaurant on the square, Opa, is the perfect place to plan your uh, fabulous food, craft libation party, company dinner, festive party event. No pear salad on the menu. No bananas drenched in mayo. Just good food. And great craft libations. They can accommodate up to 200 guests. Stop by if you're coming in this weekend. Or if you're thinking about catering or booking information, contact Jeannie, 601-421-7147. Uh, podcast brought to you by Service Specialist. 
staffing and recruiting agency. Again, if you're looking for a job, they can help you and it's free for you. If your company is looking to hire quality, hard to find talent, you don't pay until you hire someone that they sent to you. In other words, you've got nothing to lose. Give Will, Sydney, or Kelsey a call at 601-573-9242 or check out their new and improved website, servicespecialistltd.com. Get the beautiful and healthy smile you deserve at Corinth Dental. Dr. Bubba McQueen, Dr. Jenny Beth Hendrick are devoted to restoring and enhancing the natural beauty of your smile using conservative state-of-the-art procedures that will result in a beautiful, long-lasting smile from routine checkups to advanced treatment, including implants and Invisalign. Corinth Dental is here to help you achieve your smile goals. So schedule your appointment today. Take the first step toward a better version of yourself at CorinthDental.com. Are you a displaced corporate executive wanting to put your career in your own hands? Are you an experienced entrepreneur looking to diversify? Either way, Andy Ludeke can help. He owns multiple franchises and businesses. He uses his expertise to help others find their American dream through a very thorough and free consultation process. So call Andy. Put your uh, life and your career in your own hands. It's 100% free. You've got nothing to lose. It's uh, Andy at MyPerfectFranchise.net or 404-973-9901. Yeah, I, was, I knew this was going to be there, so I was curious. I promise I'm going to move on in a second. Southern Living, one Google search. 30 Southern salad recipes that don't include lettuce. 30. <laughs> All good. Yeah. It tops off with strawberry pretzel jello salad. I've seen yes, that. I've seen that one. I've seen classic that macaroni salad with ham. Okay. Marinetti cucumber, tomato, and onion is a legitimate that's salad. salad. Yeah, that yeah. counts. Yeah. That's 10 out of 10. Yeah. Now I'm allergic to tomato. It might kill me, but otherwise that's fresh tomato. I can eat salsa and marinara. Broccoli grape and pasta salad. Cranberry fluff salad. Yeah, everybody's had that on their Thanksgiving table at some point in some variation. Sure. My mother was partial to pistachio in, a, uh, in hers. Okay. Whipped cream corn salad. Ugh. Ugh. Creamy overnight fruit salad that has like the mayonnaise on the fruit. I'm probably uh, uh, uh. deviled egg potato salad. And we're really making it bad now. We're taking potato salad and putting deviled egg eggs on top of it. Ambrosia is not really a thing anymore in 2024 the way it was back I in the day. I remember that being a big thing. Do you really? Yeah, I didn't like it. Pea corn and bacon salad. Hmm. No. Watergate salad. Back in the. What was involved in Watergate salad? <laughs> he broke into a hotel and <laughs> stole some stuff or what? Uh, pistachio flavored instant pudding mix, canned pineapples, whipped cream, mini marshmallows, and toasted nuts. Okay. Salad. Sure. Sounds like a very bad dessert. Mm, scrolling for any more that make really, really dumb sense, but most of them are all in those variations. It was a lot of jello type things that congealed and yeah, you did have back in the day the the gelatin thing that put the cottage cheese in the jello. So when you cut it and sliced it, it was jello, but it had like cottage cheese and stuff in it. But why? <laughs> <laughs> I mean <but> why? <laughs> <laughs> where do you fall on pear salad is number 30 by the way our favorite we were just discussing okay their favorite part of that one is that when you do it the way the recipe calls from back in the day you put lettuce under the pear salad but didn't eat the lettuce you left the lettuce as a garnish on the bottom and just picked up the pear the cheese and the may mayonnaise and ate it that way hmm. where do you fall on cranberry sauce uh, I, I'm I'm not a big fan. I don't mind it just kind of straight out of the can. It's fine. But you're, you're okay with the can versus like the homemade where you simmer it down and yeah, do the whole deal. Whatever. Yeah. You don't like it enough to need that effort. Precisely. Okay. That's the key. Yeah. Okay. What we all knew was we have going the we have the weird Thanksgiving this year because it's the games in Oxford. Yeah, you're having to. You got to really figure out: Do you do this or do we wait till Friday? I know we can have this conversation a number of times later in the year, but. And then on Friday, do you even want all that stuff on Friday, even if you didn't have it on Thursday? I want the leftover sandwich on Friday. So I'll sacrifice the meal on Thursday to have the leftover sandwich well, on Friday. Well, you can have the meal on Friday and have the leftover sandwich on Saturday. Yeah, but I want it on Friday. I want to watch the whatever the afternoon football game is, and I want to do it on Friday. Yeah. 
You can do Thanksgiving at like 11. You got plenty of time on yeah, Thursday you, before. You, you do. Just... It's not like you're going to have nine meals and be asleep on the couch at 3.30 because you ingested 4,800 calories. No, it's true. Just, just the whole thing of it. Knowing that, hey, about 4 o'clock, I got to get in my car and drive to Vaught Hemingway. That's a, that's a game changer for Thanksgiving. It is. It is. I'm not complaining. I was really hoping A&M and Texas were going to take that mantle, but I, I don't too. think so. I was too. I think it's continued to be on Thursday, and they're just scared to say it out loud yet. That's what I think. Because they haven't announced it, have no. they? It's like May. But I have a hunch. Yeah. I feel guaranteed that they're going to cancel the USC series, and I feel pretty confident that they're going to play on Thursday. Same. Those are the two things that I feel very good about. Because I've argued. And everybody just kind of looks at me like, eh. sorry, <laughs> get, it, get it off your chest. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, exactly what I thought would happen yesterday did happen. The men did not draw what the women did. The men got 14.8 million viewers. That's a slight uptick from the, uh, the year before, which was 14.69. So women's basketball is now more popular than men's. There you go. Breaking out. Yeah. Um, because we have to compare them and we have to do this. And we can't just enjoy two things for what they are, which is what has frustrated me the entire season. Um, it's also where, and I forget the exact thing, what's going to come out the next couple of days is talking about media rights deals. And it's another thing where both things can be true. A little bit on that real quick. And I have a point that I'm actually making with the, with the, with the ratings okay. is on an average game by game basis. So not just highs with Iowa or South Carolina or whomever, Connecticut, but game by game. And now look, obviously the TV situation is better for the men. There are lots of whatever there. But average viewership for the men per game was over 9 million this year. Average viewership per game for the women was 2.2 million this year. Okay. So that's what plays into the amount of points or whatever they call it from a rights and a money put in standpoint. That can be true without also saying because of the uptick to whatever degree it exists, the women need more of a point moving forward because it was a drastic difference in the amount of money, but even way, way, way far beyond just four times the yeah. X number of of, of that. Um, and I've got it here. I'm going to try to find it in a second on what that uh, on what that was. Let's see where was it? Where here we go? All right. Um, the men's side from a money each side earned, the men earned eight hundred and seventy three million dollars okay. in money from TV deals. The women earned six point five million. That's a huge difference. I mean, yeah. Come on, women need more. That's not right. Right. Um, but the number that you're not going to hear from a lot of media media today mm -hmm. is average viewership, nine point nine for the men, two point two for the women. No, you will not hear that. Um, cause but that, that, that defeats the narrative, but that's from D one ticker this morning. Uh, and I, I, and I was reading through that a little bit. So again, multiple things. True. Sure. Women are on the uptick. It's a huge number. 100%. Celebrate it. Yes. It doesn't mean the men's tournament is dying. Um, at mm -hmm. the same time, it no. is, it is not meaning very clear that the men's tournament's not dying. However, however, that's where I'm going. Cause I bristled at this at first. I'll be honest. I, I, I re, as, as you guys know, I pull a lot of stuff from much newsletters in the morning moment for the podcast and the athletic pulse is one of them. And they, did you read it this morning? I have not read it this morning. Okay. They let off their thing and they said, uh, blah, 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 blah. I was blah, out blah, sawing blah. a tree this morning. Oh, uh, that's true. So before people are like, why didn't you prepare for the show? Well, I was out in the rain with a saw. I don't have a saw. I wouldn't even be able to do that. I'm, I'm... Y'all aren't big on power tools and stuff either. No, so this I'm is a, a hand saw. Okay. Yeah. You can get like a chainsaw. That would have been interesting at 6.45 <laughs> in the morning. <laughs> With the bad knee. You kind of want to put a Jason mask on if you're going to do that. Yeah, I mean, sure. I'll be honest. <laughs> yeah. If I'm going to chainsaw, I kind of want to put a Jason mask too, on. Sure. Yeah, I mean, let's, let's play dress up at that point. Okay, no, here's where they live. They went through all the numbers and stuff. Women average this. Women, you know, men average this. Blah 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 blah. Sure, you had the TBS thing, all the stuff we talked about. Nine twenty ABC for the women. Mm -hmm. His first bullet point, though, in college, the women's game is simply a better product than the men's right now. Is how he let it off. And at first, I went, oh, "Don't do this." He's right. Okay. I'm, because I'm, I'm the point is not gameplay. Debate that all you want. Whatever. I don't care either way. There are positives to both, frankly, in some different ways. 
But he says, think of it like any TV show you love. In the women's game, you've had four years of these people. They don't get into the portal the same way. Yeah. They're not obsessed with NIL downline the same way. You recognize people, not teams. You're watching for people, not teams, in different ways where UConn, we all know Donovan Klingon, but off the top of your head, name three other players, I don't know. Yeah, Cam Spencer. Yeah, but you know what yeah, I mean. Sure. And they've all been there one year, the other guys. Cam yeah. Spencer was playing for somebody else last year. Yeah. And when you look at all those different things, superstars on the men's side are, aren't, aren't existing at the college level right now. They're not blowing up. Absolutely. I mean, Zach Eady to some extent. I mean, like, but, literally, Kyle Filipowski was one of the more recognizable yeah. names in college basketball. He was there it was his second year, and he's a— he's And a, most people could name at least four, maybe six or seven women's players before they named him. Oh, sure. At least four, for sure. Well, I mean, like, take Iowa, for example. Not only did you know Caitlin Clark, but because of Caitlin Clark, you knew about Kate Martin. You knew about Gabby Marshall. You, you knew some of their people. And you're going to know Angel Reese and Haley Van Lith and sure, all of them. Frankly, next year the Johnson girl who's coming back for LSU. I mean, there's there's yeah, there's all this kind of stuff here. So his point is more. There's been more exposure. There's been more investment. Caitlin Clark made that happen. And when you get those type of storylines, you simply aren't getting on the men's side that is going to create a better product to talk about and watch from an entertainment level standpoint. Again, forget the game. That's not what we're talking about. And that standpoint for this season, maybe, I don't know in the future, this season, the women's product was the better product. Yeah, I'm about that. Period. Sure. It's not to my athleticism, none of that. I don't care. It's not the point. And they play quarters. Yes. Huge difference. Yeah, it's one of the reasons the I like quarters the quarters are a huge difference. One of the reasons I like the NBA game more than the college game is the quarters. The foul reset. I mean, in the college game, man, you have a run on fouls in the first four minutes of a half. You're shooting free throws for days. Just bogs everything down. And that and that's noticeable in the arena. That's noticeable on TV, no matter what, everywhere. Kareem Abdul Jabbar. It's still every time I see it. It's Where's he gonna go? I don't know. Is he just gonna follow him to St. Louis, or is he gonna get much bigger deals than that? He probably follows him. It worked. He did. He's a good player. They almost won the NIT. It's huge. Yeah, good player. I mean, he, again, he closes it here with maybe that changes next year when top recruits Cooper Flag and Common. How you pronounce his other Malak M A L A U C H arrive at Duke. Yeah, I don't know how you say it. But those guys are almost surely one and dones too, right? Or maybe we actually get a challenger for UConn next season, and of course, maybe that's Duke, and maybe this is all changes with Clark gone, though the women still have Paige Beckers, Juju Watkins, and Flaj Johnson. I mean, Connor Flagg will be the most viewed player in college basketball probably since Zion Williamson. Mm -hmm. I mean, he, 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 he's a head-turner. People will pay attention to him. The college basketball is about coaches. And the... And the Women's game's about the players. It's true. You know, NBA's about the players. You know, I saw it last night. Basketball and football. There are only 10 active head coaches with a national title in both sports combined. Oh, is that right? Yeah. It's hard to There's win. There's been that much movement. It's hard to win a title, too. Jimbo's gone. Saban's gone. Yeah. 10. That's it. Harbaugh's gone. He's not active anymore. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And in basketball, it's actually more than football. Like, because in basketball, you at least get like, you know, Izzo and people that have been doing it for a while that do have a title at some point. But I don't know. I just, I, I read that and went, I don't know. And then I went, no, okay. I, I, I see what you mean. And I think I absolutely agree with you. Orioles are calling uh, holiday up today. Yeah. You interested? Well, I am because man, that now that is rare, right? Twenty year old. I mean, just shortstop. But look, he had a phenomenal camp. He's a great player, and if you're ready, or they think you're ready, you're ready. And more and more major leagues learning is is a teaching. It's a younger game. One of the interesting things, this doesn't apply to him, but one of the interesting things is just the influx of major leaguers who 
came out of college and really spent a year or less in the minors. That's true. You know, like there's already talk with the Cubs, for example, that Matt Shaw is going to get called up sooner rather than later. He was playing college baseball a year ago. Just announced, uh, Arkansas has announced Calipari. I actually got the email, and I don't know when I would have been on an Arkansas Razorbacks mailing list. So that tells you the level of downstream that they are sending this out because it's in my email. And again, I don't think I've ever bought a ticket from Arkansas that I can remember off the top of my head. I have bought tickets. Um, so you probably have the email too. Yeah, I, it, it popped up on my phone. Welcome, Coach Cal. It's official Naismith Hall of Fame coach John Calipari, who has led six teams to the Final Four, has been named the 14th head coach in men's basketball at Arkansas. Uh, free fan event. All Razorback fans are invited to attend Coach Calipari's welcome ceremony inside Bud Walton Arena Wednesday, April 10th at 6 o'clock Central Time. Yep. Public parking is available in lots, blah, blah, blah. Gates open 5 p.m., via the south entrance and the graphic includes 2015 naismith basketball hall of fame inductee 2012 national champions and then one of two coaches to lead three different schools to a final four it doesn't say it here but the other one is rick patino i would assume no he's in, has he been to a third final four who else would it be oh it didn't even say active though it just says period i don't know who's the other one i don't know Say it again. What, what am I looking One for? One of two coaches to lead three different schools to a final four. Okay. Patino was off top of my head because he has titles with at least two, Kentucky and Louisville. Okay. But I don't know if he has a third final four. Might. I have no idea. Cal took UMass, Memphis, Kentucky and, and Memphis. Kentucky. Yes. Who's the third? No, there's only one of two. It's just oh. to lead three different schools. Oh, okay. So if it's Patino, that's the answer. But I don't know if it's Patino. And then pictures of all of his... Final fours are on the uh, graphic as well. It'll be interesting to see what kind of crowd they get for an announcement. I mean, those sometimes those things are pretty indicative of what an excitement level is. My guess is it's pretty high. <laughs> I can't imagine what Matt Jones' call-in show was like last night. I mean, I'm, I'm laughing oh, just thinking yeah. about it right now. He's getting manna from heaven right now. Just, just, just. Oh, if you just just the heavens opened up. And I thought about Justin Rowland the other day when rivals had server issues the day after they've been waiting for this day forever and they're down for two hours. The first the emails afternoon. that you would send yeah. to everyone. Yeah, just like, hey, I hate all of you. Mark, I don't know whether the, the kid from Belmont Dia is going to be at Ole Miss or not. They're, they're in on him. But so are others. Uh, Rick Patino is the other one in 1986-87. He took Providence. the Providence. I should remember because Billy Donovan was his was his guard. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. To the Final Four in 1987. I remember that. He was at Providence two seasons before taking the Kentucky job. 17 and 14, 25 and nine NIT semifinal Final Four. Kentucky, his first two seasons within it was ineligible for the postseason. Probation? Yeah. 89 to 90? Yeah. That's why when that when that team, that the Leitner shot, they loved those guys so much because they'd stuck with it through. That was in 92, the Elite Eight game? Yeah. That was to get to the Final Four? 91 or 92. Yeah, 92. 29 and 7, 12 and 4 in the SEC. That was John Pelfrey and um, was that Shepard on that team? No idea. Don't know. Aminu Timberlake. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Where were you on the Leitner shot? Were you watching? Mm hmm. Right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Locked in. Duke won the title? Yes. They beat UNLV? They beat Michigan that year. They beat the Fab Five. Oh, that was beat that UNLV one. the year before. Okay. That's where college basketball is different. That year, that next year with Duke, with uh, Christian Leitner, Cherokee Parks, Bobby Hurley, Grant Hill. Thomas Hill, Brian Davis. You can still name all those guys because they played together for years. College basketball doesn't have that anymore. Mm -hmm. And that Kentucky team was beloved by the fans because they'd been together through the tough times and a coaching change and all of that. And two seconds away. Was it Tony Woods made the shot to to give to give Kentucky a lead and you thought that's it, they won. They knocked Duke off. Duke's not going to get there. And then there you go. Hill makes the pass to Leitner and 
took his time, turned, made the shot. I mean, one of those indelible moments. Mm -hmm. That's hilarious, Grian. Says uh, Jones did a special KSR edition that ended up bouncing Sean Hannity off the Kentucky radio station. Said he's very proud of that. Oh, yeah. I mean, of the two, I know it won that night mattered more. Well, no doubt. And I bet Hannity does some numbers in Kentucky. Yeah, yeah, sure. But not the Wildcats. Such a such a different fan base when it comes to basketball. They not only do they love it, many of them are very educated with it. They they know what they're watching. Which makes it tougher on a coach. Oh, yeah. You, hey, you're no, not no, tricking no. anybody. Uh-uh. So. Calipari started <clears throat> so hot there. Like, you go back and look at the first several years. I mean, he made Kentucky. He he elevated the program. It was such a weird mix of excitement for the future and agony. I watched the, I think this is right, his first team that really made the run. Was it like John Wall on that team? I can't remember. Maybe Cousins. And I want to say Cousins was on that. I think team. it was him and John Wall. And they got beat by West Virginia in the Elite Eight. And I watched that from a bar in Lexington. And when it ends, you're seeing so much excitement for the future. But I mean, their season ends and it is it is like a funeral in a way that I don't know that I've seen in any other sport at any other time. And I've seen a lot of old Miss stuff fall short, but yeah, watching a Wildcats Elite Eight game in a Lexington bar because Ole Miss was playing Kentucky in baseball that weekend, and I was up, and it was it was pretty nuts. It was so. Sean Woods, by the way. Mark okay. corrected me, not Tony. There you go. But I knew it was Woods made a kind of a runner. He banked it, mm-hmm. banked it in, and you thought there it is. The it gods wasn't. want Kentucky to win, and it became the most forgotten shot in NCAA basketball history. Yeah, did not matter. So, podcast brought to you by Northeast Spark N E S P A R C. Service people over across rural communities, two packages, the Ignite, the 100 Mbps, or the Blaze. That is their one gig option. Your hometown team bringing you world-class broadband at sydneyspark.com, 662-238-3159. Phone service, portal controls, network security, wireless mesh extender for those who need the extra help, and more. So again, 662-238-3159. Southern Traditions Farm is a 68-acre, 32-stall, upscale equestrian training and boarding facility in Canton, Mississippi. Two sand rings, a grass ring. Miles of wooded trails, a lot offered at Southern Traditions, including horseback riding offerings uh, from beginner lessons to advanced to competing in nationally recognized competitions. It's also a great venue for uh, corporate outings, reunions, those types of things. So get in touch with them on Facebook or Instagram at Southern Traditions Farm. And we're brought to you by Sotheby's International Realty. I'll have a mailbag to you later today that's brought to you by Art Hayes, Sotheby's International Realty. Are you thinking of making a move? Put the power of Sotheby's International Realty to work for you. As a licensed agent with Sotheby's and a supporter of all things Ole Miss, Art uh, Hayes can help you buy or sell in your hometown or anywhere in the world at no charge to you. Seriously. So call and ask Art how. 612-805-5929 or email him at Arthur, A-R-T-H-U-R dot Hayes, H-A-Y-S, at lakesmn.com. Most random thing I'll I'll tell you today, but I saw this and just found it interesting because it's not something we would be aware of here, at least anywhere near right now. Uh, did you see what they're doing to ban music in Chechnya yesterday? I did not see did this. this. They went to ban music? Kind of. So last week, the Russian Republic, Chechnya, mm-hmm. banned music that's too fast or too slow, oh. decreeing that all music should fit into a tempo ranging from 80 to 116 beats per, per minute, That's slow enough that most Western pop and dance music will be outlawed by the conservative blah, 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 whatever there is there in uh, in Chechnya. So it's basically eliminating all of our music from being allowed there to give you an understanding for reference. Some of our music does suck. Sure. Bobby McFerrin's Don't Worry, Be Happy, that's too slow, so it's banned. That's 60, because that's a problem. Yeah. 69 beats per minute. Lady Gaga's Bad Romance, too fast. That's 119 beats per minute. But Radiohead's creep just right, 92 beats per minute there, <laughs> for an example. So, yeah, that's going on in, uh, in Chechnya <laughs> this week, if you're uh, if you're curious. Not headed to Chechnya anytime soon. It's going to be a minute. A lot of countries that you could get to before you. It's going to be a minute before I get to Chechnya. 
I, I will give you one if you haven't seen this, and I, I don't think I've mentioned some podcasts, and I just stumbled across it. And as I've told people, I'm not a music guy. I'm, I think I'm tone deaf. Like I think I literally have an inability to keep a beat. I mean, I've I have made this joke to people, but it's true. I was basically kicked out of sixth grade beginner band because I couldn't just go. Like yeah. they ran me out. Like yeah. nothing I could do at that point. Um, I stumbled across though Chad Smith, the drummer for Red Hot Chili Peppers. Um, he was on Drumio, which is a YouTube account that does a lot of music, a lot of drum stuff. And they do a bit where they play a song the drummer doesn't know, and they just start playing without the drum, and he has to just try to pick it up and catch it. Uh -huh. And it was maybe the most remarkable thing I have seen on YouTube is his ability to immediately pick it up and play it better than the original song. And he had never heard it before. He had never heard. Yeah. He goes, I know he goes, I mean, he literally like, I have to go, what is that? Some emo shit or something. Like he made a yeah. joke about it. It was like, I, I got, I got nothing. And they were like, Oh, it's this guy. And he's like, Oh, that's Jared Leto's band. And he started understanding who that was, but he's like, yeah, I'd never heard it. And like, he hears like three beats and just starts going. And you're like, yeah, it's incredible. Oh my God. That's incredible. And they asked him after like, Hey, what, what, what? And he goes, well, once I realized the, the tempo was in four, then I, could do this and i'm like ah, way beyond me yeah be, the people that have that level of talent i'm amazed by you. sure sure i'm i'm blown away that you can do it but it, it's worth a watch if you haven't seen it i mean it's blown up all over the internet so most of you probably have but i'll have to look for that, that it, it's that, it's that really wild. really good yeah because yeah. there at the end he's like they're like hey because they get let most most people they said that they do this to just kind of listen the first time through and then go back and play it and i mean he took like five seconds and went and just started going, and they were like, "You want to do it again?" He was like, "No, nah, I killed it." I'm like, "Nah, I'm good. That was that was great." Just we're not all the same. Oh, at all. I mean, and that's good. Oh, you want people like that? Of course. That's why you love to watch greatness. I mean, that's exceptionalism. He does look like Will Ferrell. They are very, very similar looking. Oh, I've seen. Uh, yeah, I've yeah. seen that. They've. Yeah. done bits and stuff yeah, together at bits. that yeah. at, at, at that at that point so anyway yeah if you're if you're into it at all and you haven't seen it it's it's, it's worth it because it's pretty damn cool but nonetheless i saw this on the board and we'll close here because i don't really have a lot of other news uh mason nichols story up your story from kiffin yesterday up rebel grove we'll talk jeffrey There's tomorrow. a recruiting recruiting story up as well dylan alfred committed to all oh, this yesterday right. yep. yeah you want to break him down real quick before i move on uh really plays football well a lot of visitors were in town yesterday, or a handful. Handful of uh, visitors were in town. He's a 2025 wide receiver from Sarah Land, Alabama. That's what I got. I Number one wide him. receiver in Alabama committing to Ole Miss is substantial. He, he, I think he was out at the Elite 11 thing the other day. Was he? Yeah, it was just so – I don't know how people to cover those camps. Where's Deuce Knight going to end up? Shh. Um, Shh. I think Ole Miss is in it. Notre Dame's obviously in it. He's still committed to them. Still, still a little early. You know what is? I mean, in all seriousness, if you're a high school quarterback and you're making a decision, what is your decision based on? Are you trying to play? Are you waiting to see Picking what quarterback? Are you waiting to see what Ole Miss does to replace Jackson Dart? Do they go into the portal? Mm -hmm. Do they go with one of the young guys? What do one of the young guys look? I don't know. I don't know how yeah. you could. I don't know how you could really break that down today. Yeah. There's a thread on our board a couple days ago. Uh, I think Sandman started it. Last 20 years, would you pick a different quarterback than Jackson Dart to be the quarterback of this football team? Would you grab one of them? Last Since 2004. Years, so you, you couldn't pick Chad and you couldn't pick Corral. Anybody else? Or if you had to pick someone else, who would you pick? And I can't have Kelly? Nope. Masoli? No. Of that list, though. I'm, I'm trying to think. I'm trying to go through right, them quickly. in my mind. All right, quickly. I can do it. Spurlock. No. Lane. Flat. Schaefer. Seth Adams. Jevin Sneed. Uh, Mackie. Stout. Brunetti. Masoli. Stanley. Wallace. Patterson. Tiamu. Plumley, Dart. I mean, out of that group. Technically Buchanan or Kincaid. 
I mean, I would I would consider Jevin Sneed when he was – there were some moments in 2008 where he was an elite quarterback. The dart's moving better. Yeah. Um, That's why I thought about Masoli's ground game, but you got to throw it this year. you got wide receivers. Yeah. you got to throw it. And I'm one of the people that I, I always like to give the proper respect to Bo Wallace. Yeah. I, I, I There's don't, an alternate history to his shoulder was just so banged up. Yeah. I mean, he, he ran into that linebacker against Tulane, and that was it. I mean, what does a healthy – Bo Wallace look like because his leadership skills were off the charts. He, uh, his intangibles, his toughness, off the charts. But you know, no. I, is there anybody that I know? And Dart made a big leap from year one to year two in that system. If he makes the same leap from year two to year three, I mean, look out. I think it's Dart in year three. I, I do too. I'm curious to see what they do at running back. I think they're going to add Henry Parrish. Obviously, it's not a, it's not exactly a well-kept secret. I think they'll add another running back. I don't know that it's going to be one of these high-profile guys because those are expensive. I don't know what kind of funds they have. Am I crazy? I'll take Dart over Corral. No, you're not crazy at all. Yeah. No, I mean. Now, Chad, I don't know. You give me Chad in 15. Chad's got a yeah, electric that. arm. Like if I can have 15 Chad, I'm like, I want 15 Chad. The thing about Dart that gets leadership skills, intelligence, toughness. I think I'd rather have Dart. And I know I'd rather have Dart than Corral. I mean, I'm not I'm not trying to rip on Matt, but yeah, I yeah, wouldn't sure. even that's that's a no brainer. Now Lane and Corral's ear. Whew, that's a good point. Were there no mistakes? Uh-huh. Here's your read. Yeah. Yeah, I have until 15 seconds. Hey, Matt, d- don't do that. Do this. Yeah. Thanks. Hey, look that look that safety off for a second. Do that, and then go back here. And then this guy's going to come like, oh. He called it a cheat code. Yeah, with, with, with Lane and Matt's ear, that would. He's knowledgeable on, I mean, Lane is very aware of what his capabilities are with reading Offenses and defenses in real time. He knows that something is not always going to happen for every team. I'm impressed you could do that with the quarterbacks. I could not do that with the ULM quarterbacks. From you couldn't pull that off on ULM? On. No. I mean, Bubby Brister. But I think <laughs> Bubby was before that time. <laughs> Bubby Brister. Mm-hmm. Who was the Monroe quarterback during the fun row when they were good for a couple years there? Was it Bonner or something? I can't think of his name. Is that right? I don't know. Bonner sounds like a ULM quarterback, so maybe that's what it was. Yeah, I just can't remember. Okay. When I was a kid, uh, who was the quarterback at Louisiana Tech that was so good? He went to play in Canada for a while. Matt Daigle, maybe? Louisiana Tech? They had a quarterback in the early 80s that was like a really good quarterback. He went and played in the CFL for a while. No idea. I don't know. Sorry. Am I wrong on that one? I can't. I, I couldn't tell you who the ULM quarterback was. I grew up cheering for Alabama as a kid. That was my team. Bandwagoner. Just no, my, both of my parents have degrees from the University I'm of playing. Alabama. I I was born in Alabama. Spent my early years in Tuscaloosa. <laughs> Until what year? Like I was three. Yeah, I can't. I'll I'll just quickly scrolling. I can't figure out who I was referring to, but it doesn't really, it doesn't really matter. That's okay. Apparently, in 2013, ULM was running a two quarterback offense. Those usually work. That's Cody Wells and Colton Browning. There you go. Yeah. So not Bonner. Would have gotten those. Yeah. All right. We'll uh, we'll wrap there. I'm not sure I could name one player on the current ULM roster. I'm not even sure I could name who the coach is right they now. They would have to be a former Rebel in the portal or something. Who'd they that hire right. instead of Bowden? Because Bowden's gone. I, I don't even know who the coach is. Do you really not know? I, I, I really don't. Well, you didn't get an interview, and once you didn't get an interview, you just kind of zoned out. I did kind of zone out, it. yeah. Matt Vietor. Okay. V-I-A-T-O-R? Is that correct? Or is that the last guy? I don't know. I know some Vietors in, in Louisiana. Oh, never mind. No, he's gone. Was that the last guy, maybe? I don't know. Uh, Bryant Vincent, named head coach at ULM on 
December 5th, 2023. Oh, I should have known that. I think he and Siski are buddies. Are they? I think so. Okay. We're fired up to welcome Coach Brian Vincent to the Warhawk family and lead ULM football, said John Hartwell, athletics director. Warhawk family. Mm-hmm. You remember the Warhawk family? I don't think so. Okay. I'm not sure how long $25 keeps you in the in the. Brian family. Vincent was a uh, football coach at Spanish Ford back in the day. Yeah. So there you go. There you go. Yeah, there you go. All right. Uh, Rebelgrow.com back with Jeffrey tomorrow. We will talk some, I don't know, some basketball, some football, and then a couple of days away from the Grove Bowl games and Mississippi State Ole Miss baseball at Swayze Rebels looking for their first series win against Ole Mississippi State since 2015. Nick Perkins, the hero back in 2015. So it's been a minute, nine years later for that series. So take care. Have a good day. And we'll talk to you tomorrow.